Despite all evidence to the contrary, mainstream media has been in a feeding frenzy over Tesla's autopilot being to blame for a fatal crash that happened a few days ago. Meantime, the actual data shows that Teslas with autopilot engaged are approaching 10 times safer than human drivers. Let's take a look at the evidence and see what's really going on here. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So obviously I'm doing this in an OBS studio. I'm gonna to try to do this fairly efficiently since we are obviously still traveling. We are in South Padre Island. We obviously were attempting to catch the serial number 15 launch, but it looks like I'm guessing probably a week from now at this point. So we're going to go to Austin and check out the Terra Texas there. So if anybody's in Austin, like look us up, please. Cause <laughs> it'd be fun to have someone show us around. Neither of us has ever been to Austin. So we'd love to see what kind of cool stuff there is there. Anyway, what did I want to, Anyway, what I wanted to talk about here was the the kind of dichotomy or the, the, I don't know, cognitive dissonance between what the mainstream media is saying and what the evidence is showing in terms of what we can see with the data about Tesla's being safe in autopilot or even not in autopilot versus what the mainstream media shows. So let me just show this first. Uh, let me cut off this camera. Right, okay. So here we go. This is from a CNBC uh, article and you can see that Devin Clark here tweeted, two men killed after Tesla that may have been in autonomous driving or self-driving mode didn't adhere to a curve, slammed into a tree, then burst into flames in the woodlands, officials say. Firefighters say they had to call Tesla to figure out how to oust the blade. I think oust is not the correct word, but anyway. <clears throat> so this article and many, many other articles implied number one, that full self-driving may or was in fact uh, to blame for this crash. Horrible crash, by the way. The uh, driver and the passenger or the two people in the car were both in passenger seats. One was in the front, one was in the back. Now, obviously, if they weren't wearing seat belts, there's a reasonable chance that the two of them were thrown you know, around. And so one of them may well have been in the driver's seat when this happened. Um, the, the, the media has really picked up on this and has not kind of taken a step back, even though Elon Musk himself took the time to actually notify the press, you know, and he usually doesn't do this, but he notified the press that full self-driving number one was not purchased with the car, number two was not used with the car, and number three, full self-driving cannot even uh, operate, not the beta version, of course, these guys did not have the beta because they didn't even purchase the regular full self-driving, but the normal version that we have that we use, if you have a, a street that has no lane lines, so it doesn't have a center lane in it, autopilot simply will not engage. It, it doesn't happen. So in other words, it has to, you would have to drive manually to do this. Also, autopilot does not accelerate rapidly. So my understanding of the situation is that the, the, the car itself was accelerating very rapidly. I think it was up to around 80 miles per hour uh, when it crashed off the side of the road. And under the circumstances with the shortness of the road and everything, the way that autopilot would drive if it was engaged, it, it accelerates very gently. And so it would never have gotten to the place where you would have seen, uh, you know, you, you couldn't have gotten to that speed over the distance that was happening. So anyway, the problem with all of this is that everyone keeps repeating and repeating, repeating this false information. And so then of course, Tesla stock goes down. But beyond that, people lose trust or faith in the ability of autopilot to work when the data clearly shows that that's not the case. Why is this happening? A lot of people, well, Tesla Q is part of the reason why, but I think a lot of people are, are assuming that there's some sort of conspiracy theory going on. I actually think it's a little less than that. I think it's kind of, if it bleeds, it leads. Um, shoddy reporting, and of course, taking other people's reports and just copying them without thinking about what's going on or questioning the facts. And then the other thing is that the Tesla crashes are sort of like airline crashes. In other words, you've got uh, every time an airline crashes, and you know, hopefully that won't happen anytime in the near future, but every time an airline crashes, there's a lot of news about it because it's a really big deal. Now, if you think about it, if you consider the number of like fires and crashes and things that happen with gas powered automobiles, it is a lot more frequent than with Teslas. And there's actually evidence with that about that on the Tesla website. And you can go look at that. Uh, Teslas are somewhere around 2.5 million miles between a fire. So it's, it's a huge amount and uh, regular automobiles are much, much more uh, 
you know, less miles driven before there's a fire. So anyway, the idea would be that if like a GM or a Ford or something like that or a Toyota or whatever, every time there was a fatal accident about that, uh, you know, with those cars on the road, there would be nothing else in the news aside from that because there are so many of those per day. But Teslas are sort of treated like airline crashes where they're so infrequent that they're a really big deal still. So I think that's kind of the reason why this is all happening. But in the meantime, let's take a look at this Tesla Roddy article. All of these things are going to be linked in the description, of course. Uh, I'm just going to take a little chunk out of it. Whole Mars catalog, by the way, has been really great, or Whole Mars blog, as his handle is on Twitter, has been really great about defending Tesla against all of these ridiculous accusations. <clears throat> so you can see here that he, on April 17th, said a Tesla with no autopilot is twice as safe as the average car in the US. A Tesla with autopilot is twice as safe as a Tesla being driven manually. And Tesla with autopilot on, on can drive almost 10 times further without a crash than the average US car. And then of course, Elon Musk responded to him because whole Mars actually has Elon's ear. And he said, essentially passive autopilot. <clears throat> in other words, the car intervenes only when crash probability is high, cuts crashes in half. Active autopilot, where the car drives itself, cuts crashes in half again. It doesn't mean there are no crashes, but on balance, autopilot is unequivocally safer. So that's the important aspect of this. So basically what he's saying is statistics are showing that if you just drive, let's just take a car, whatever, <laughs> generic car X that is not a Tesla, you're going to have somewhere in the <clears throat> upper 400,000s of miles before you have a crash, which is still really good, right? It means that on average, <clears throat> excuse me, on average, you're going to drive a very long time before you as an individual will have a crash. But of course, you know, millions of miles a day are driven on roads, so of course there are crashes. But basically what that means is that if you drive with passive safety features, so if you just drive a Tesla as you would a normal car, you don't activate any of the special features and it just engages itself when something is about to happen that it notices, you're still going to be twice as safe as driving another car. Now, um, I noticed that the other day, of course, we're on the road trip and we're gonna do a video about that at some time really soon. But the, um, the upshot of it was that we were actually in South Padre Island <clears throat> and it was the middle of the day and the car in front of us was an older car and either the brake lights were completely out or they were super, super dim. So you couldn't really see them very well. And what happened was the car, I you know, kind of was driving and I, I didn't have autopilot or cr cruise control or anything on. And I was driving down the road at like 35 miles an hour, which is about the speed limit here. And as I suddenly went like, whoa, that car is really going slowly and you know, the brake lights didn't go on to alert me of that. And what had happened was the guy stopped really fast to turn into a parking lot at the last second. But just as I was noticing that that was happening, the car itself braked. And I was like, that's cool, because that saved at least a half a second before my brain would have been like, uh-oh, better stop, better hit the brakes. And so it would have been much closer. It stopped, it didn't even have to decelerate all that hard. But that was really cool. So that's the exact kind of safety feature that if, you know, if I had been looking out the window or something at that exact moment, you know, if I'd been distracted at all, that extra half second or second before I checked the road again could have meant that I actually could have crashed with that car if I'd not been paying attention. So that's exactly the kind of thing that allows the car to be safer. Now, when you engage the safety features, which is traffic-assisted cruise control and then into full self-driving, it actually gets twice as safe again with that because the car is driving itself, it's paying attention, and it's never getting too close to other cars or doing anything potentially dangerous. So I think that's like, that's super, super cool. And let me bring up this chart, which I made. <laughs> so again, Tesla article is linked. This is actual data from Tesla that they have reported publicly, which means this is exact data. And by the way, they're not cherry picking this data. They go a long way. The Tesla Roddy article actually says that they actually are extremely conservative in their reporting. So they kind of report even things that might have been a situation that they could have said, well, okay, it wasn't our fault or something like that. Like I think even situations where the car's like parked in a parking lot and somebody just drives into them. So they're counting these kinds of accidents. So they're being very conservative this. So let's take a look down here, this green baseline. So the higher the number, the better, because this is number of millions of miles before there's an accident. Uh, so the green baseline is average human driver. So this is the entire fleet, and this is uh, NHTSA that's reported this. So you can see it's around 450,000. It changes a little bit. But so every 450,000 miles or so, a person has an accident uh, in, in the entire fleet. 
and then we go up. So we have passive, which means that a human is driving, but the autopilot engages when it needs to, or not autopilot, but safety features engage when they need to. And then we have autopilot, which is the basic version that everybody with a Tesla gets. And then we have full self-driving or enhanced navigate on autopilot, which is the you know super duper one where you have to pay extra for it. But so you can see that even with the passive engaged, now it's interesting because I think that there are so few uh, crashes that one crash actually adjusts these numbers quite significantly. You can see this one actually dropped slightly below a million miles right here on the quarter one with uh, passive. And you know, it's just possible there was one extra accident or something that took place that caused that. But anyway, so these numbers kind of jitter around. And also quarter four always seems to be a bad quarter, <laughs> bad quarter, bad quarter. Uh, quarter one always goes back up again afterwards. Some people were saying that was because of bad weather. I honestly think it's because of the holidays. So in the Northern hemisphere, certainly you get that, you know, that's uh, October, November, December. So that's bad months. Things are getting icky in terms of weather. But also it's the holidays, people tend tend to, let's say, drink a little bit, they tend to be exhausted, they tend to be running around and driving more, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, I, I did a basic calculation and it was, the fleet is about, what did I say, about 3, um, 3.5 billion miles per quarter are being driven. And so that's a lot of data. So, you know, if you're saying one per every 4.5 million, you're talking about billion, you're talking about a thousand times so, you know, this, this is actually very good data. There's a lot of mileage to suggest that this is really good. And it also suggests with the um, full self-driving on that we may be talking about somewhere on the order of like three accidents per quarter, <laughs> I think. Is that right? 450 million, 900 million, 1.5. Yeah, I mean, three or four accidents per quarter with autopilot on, which is the reason why this is so lumpy, because if you have three, it's going to go up, and if you have four, it's going to go down. So it's very, so these are, these are incredibly rare events that are happening, especially with the full self-driving. And I think the consequence of this is that you have to realize that over time, um, humans are not going to be allowed to drive anymore because you can see from this data that once most of the fleet out there has these kinds of capabilities involved, whether or not that means that another company has also done full self-driving as well as Tesla or whether Tesla licenses it or something like that. But eventually the data shows that this full self-driving or at least basic autopilot is so much safer than human beings driving that they're just not going to be allowed to drive anymore. So it's fascinating to see these sort of statistics, right? You see the blue line up here, the uh, full self-driving accidents per mile is, is uh, basically, it's an order of magnitude. This is 10 times safer. This is about 450,000. This is not quite 4.5 million. At one point it was. So, you know, around 4.5, 4 to 4.5 million. So it's on the order of 8 to 10 times or close to an order of magnitude safer than a human driving. And I think that's amazing and interesting news. And it completely refutes what the media keeps saying over and over again. But again, I think the media is reporting on Tesla like they would report on an airline crash. It's such a rare event and it makes big news that they're just like, we're gonna go ahead and report on this stuff and we're gonna talk about it. All right, anyway, I hope you found this episode fun and informative. Sorry, it was a little bit informal, but again, I was trying to do this again while on a trip, so it's a little difficult to do editing and so forth. Anyway, if you did enjoy it, please do like and subscribe for more of this. And of course, feel free to check out the merch store because we have a lot of cool t-shirts and things like that. Uh, also, a big thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful this entire trip. Like you guys are really helping support this trip because it is rather expensive to drive and stay at a hotel and all of that kind of stuff. So thank you all so much. And of course, as always, please feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>